What's up everybody, AnimeX here, and in this video, I'll be adding yet another part into the What If Itachi Adopted Naruto series. This is you guys hitting the like goal for the last part of the series, and basically just hit the last like goal to continue into this part. If you guys want another part to this series, make sure to hit the new like goal, and most likely last one, for the series at least, of 4,000 likes. If you guys are able to hit that, you know, of course I'll be continuing the series, just continuing on with the general, you know, Itachi stuff. As for the people that are expecting Anbu, apologies, um, this video just was, um, you know, already made and put together before the Anbu one was, so Anbu tomorrow, we'll get back to the regular scheduled program after that. Anyways, as usual, I'll be recapping the last part of the story before jumping into the new material. So, without further ado, let's get started. In the last part of this what if, we essentially were talking about and discussing how Sasuke and Hinata would basically interact with each other after the disappearance of Naruto, and we basically went through Sasuke and Hinata's training in general. It was an overall shorter part than what it usually was, but that, you know, it's fine, it's whatever. But, um, basically, we, we saw Hinata... Uh, attempt to walk up to Sasuke and essentially help get Naruto back to the village. Initially, Sasuke was skeptical about this, but after a little bit of test, a little bit of pressuring, he was able to see that Hinata did genuinely care for Naruto and was willing to risk her life in order to bring him back. So we kind of left off with Hinata and Sasuke essentially training especially hard in order to go retrieve him. So that's where we'll jump back into the story. Now, like I said, we last left off with Hinata and Sasuke training especially hard in order to go retrieve and just get strong enough to bring Naruto back to the village. But in this part, our perspective switches from that of Sasuke and Hinata's to Naruto and Itachi's. Currently, Naruto is lying down in a cave, very tired from the past few days of training with Itachi. Itachi overlooks the edge of the cave, staring down into the ground and wondering how strong Naruto was going to be able to be get based purely off of the training method that they've been using for a while, which mainly has consisted of sparring. Sasuke, even though I know you hate me more than anything, I hope you can gain enough compassion back into your heart in order to reform bond with trusted comrades. Itachi then blinks hard a couple of times, stifling any tears or emotion that may have been close to entering his heart or facial expression and he walks over to Naruto. I must be strong for both of my brothers. Itachi then steadies himself, and without warning, he picks Naruto up off the ground, and then lets him fall right back to the ground, waking him up instantly. Naruto's eyes fly open, his body jerks around, and with his sharing gone, Itachi can see that Naruto built up chakra to attack almost on instinct, which makes him proud, and makes him confident that Naruto has the good instincts of a good shinobi. Relax, Naruto, it's just me, no need to freak out. Naruto looks up. Somewhat confused and startled, but the wild look in his eyes becomes a bit tame as he sits up normally, waiting for Itachi to explain why he was woken up in such an abrupt and really rude way. Naruto, do you feel like you are getting stronger? Have you seen any improvement since I started training you? Naruto then looks at both of his hands, squeezing them fervently, then looks back up at Itachi. We, know, we only have been training, at least training seriously for a few days, but... No, I don't feel any difference, Itachi. Does that mean I'm behind schedule? Itachi nods. He then gets up. Alright, we're gonna try another exercise, Naruto. Another form of training, you could say. Itachi then points at Naruto, and he slumps over. Hmm. Naruto really must hate that Genjutsu by now. Itachi then grabs his completely motionless brother's body and walks out of the cave with him preparing to set up an exercise that should motivate Naruto pretty well. He then drops Naruto off somewhere, and writes up a brief note that will bring him up to speed. He then sets some traps within the woods, and essentially lies in wait but while Naruto wakes up. Now, when Naruto wakes up, he realizes that he was genjutsu using the ephemeral genjutsu by Itachi, which initially makes him annoyed, since he sees that whole process of Itachi doing that pretty annoying and nearly unstoppable. But before he can complain about it to Itachi, or ask Itachi why he did that, he sees a note that was lying next to him in the ground, so he picks it up and opens it. Checking to see, or checking to essentially see the contents of the note, he reads, 
As Naruto reads this note for the first time, his eyes widen to an ungodly degree, and his heart starts racing in his chest like a F1 vehicle. He decides to, you know, try again, readying himself to see if he was just imagining things, maybe see if he's just fearful. Dear Naruto, I thought you could be the successor to me in strength, but I guess I was wrong. I would let you go back to the village, but you know too much about me. I love you too much to kill you without giving you a chance to prove me wrong, so your mission for today is to get back to the cave before I find and kill you. You have a 30 minute head start. And P.S. If you weren't able to complete this, I'll slaughter Sasuke as well. Naruto then unfurls a note further and sees a splatter of blood onto the note. He then randomly feels a stinging pain on his cheek and he moves his fingers to feel where the pain originates from and he finds that he's bleeding. He is then overwhelmed by an ocean of nausea when he realizes that Itachi was sending a message by spilling his blood onto the note. As Naruto is holding the note, he says that his hands are violently quaking in complete fear and, primal, and a primal fight or flight response overcomes with his body. His arms and legs don't seem to want to respond to his demands, and he's sweating so profusely that he may as well be watering the nearby plants and foliage, completely soaking the note and making him shake and quiver in fear. Naruto then, knowing that the only way to survive and to keep Sasuke alive is to complete the mission, tries to get a hold of himself. He at first slaps himself in the face, once, not hard enough, and he slaps himself yet again, but after doing this for multiple times, he quickly realizes that he'll need something much more dramatic and much more painful to draw his absolute focus. He then pulls out a kunai, still shaking quite chaotically, and shoves the kunai directly into his left hand, spilling warm blood that then drips onto the ground. As Naruto stabs himself in the hand, his body seems to be calming down, and he seems to be coming to terms with the crappy situation that he's in. <sighs> Calm down, Naruto. Think clearly through your problem, and you'll be able to solve it. You're no longer just fighting for you, you're fighting for Sasuke. So think! Naruto then looks around, searching for any familiar landmarks or areas that can indicate where he is in proportions to the cave. When he realizes that he is most likely too far away from the cave in order to see those landmarks, he scurries up to a nearby tree and looks in every direction around him. In order to increase his overall vision and perception and the distance at which he can see, he deploys a massive amount of chakra into his eyes, straining and strengthening them, just enough for him to locate an area that is nearby to the cave. <laughs> I have Sasuke to thank for teaching me that ability. Naruto does know that by allocating chakra to his eyes, even if it's not as potent or as good as the Sharingan, he is able to strengthen any part of his body, which, like he already has done, shows that his eyes can be strengthened along with any part of his body. You know, chakra can be allocated to any part, and he then uses it to amp his eyesight. He is then hoping that his 30 minute head start will give him enough time to essentially make it to the cave without Itachi ever even starting, meaning that if he is completely you know, able to get there and fast, he's able to completely disregard any stealth or coercion techniques that he'll use and goes for pure raw speed instead, using body flicker and not really worrying about the sound that he's making. Now, as Naruto charges through this forest at top speed, his mind is still focused on maintaining his own internal clock that will keep track of the 30 minutes for him. And so far, due to his emotional outburst and his mental outburst, he has, he's so far 15 minutes deep into the time with only 15 minutes remaining. This makes Naruto completely vulnerable to attacks, considering the fact that he's far too focused on the time limit and focused on everything or nothing but applying chakra to his feet and moving at his top speeds. And this, this is Naruto's first major mistake. As he rushes through the forest, he sees something reflect in the sunlight and glint, and he soon notices one second too late that he has fallen right into the hands of Itachi's possible trap. He gets his foot caught on this wire, and he then finds himself tripping as he finds himself once again, or for the first time I should say, face to face with a paper letter bomb that detonates right in his face. Now, if this was all, if this was the only part of the trap that Itachi had set up, Naruto may have been able to regain his bearings quickly, but as the explosion carries him into the air, he is then sandwiched between two massive stumps that came from opposite sides, opposing each other and slamming into him most likely set after or after like to activate after the explosion these two logs crush naruto's body pretty badly and he falls to the ground with a broken left arm and a bruised body with a somewhat burned face from the letter bomb explosion naruto's pain then converts into a helpless anger as he slams his fist into the ground or his right fist seeing as how his left arm is completely broken 
damn it, Itachi. If you were here, I'd just fight you instead of running away. If you want to kill Sasuke, I'll fight you for that. Then Naruto hears a voice behind him that, even though for all of his gusto and all of his, his bursting confidence, it sends a chill throughout his entire body. Oh, so you wish to fight now, Naruto. You wish to throw hands with me. Naruto slowly turns to see that Itachi had caught up to him and is now ready to kill him. As Naruto sees Itachi, he notices that Itachi is in the same Anbu attire that he wore the day he killed the clan. And just like that day, his Sharingan glows. Naruto's mind reacts with instantaneous fear, attempting to run away, but his body, well, his body is fueled by a more deep-rooted emotion that Naruto has been struggling to combat. Hatred. Contempt. Try as much as he might, Naruto does deeply still have contempt in his heart for Itachi. No matter what reasoning Itachi decides to give Naruto, he can't help but feel that the death, or feel that death was not the only answer to that problem, that killing his clan and killing his family was not the only solution that was left for the Uchiha coup. Genjutsu may have been an option, or something else, coercing them through his words, through his actions, but anything but killing them may have been the issue, or may have been the solution to that issue. And for Nar for this, Naruto's true emotional standing with Itachi is just to try to understand where he's coming from. But in this moment, he realizes that he has to get these feelings off of his chest. If not through words, if not through the communication, then with a clash in fists. So, with a new and hearted resolve, Naruto gets up. He grabs his left elbow, which is bent in an awkward degree in position, and snaps it back into its correct position, making him wince ever so slightly. Itachi, I may not ever be strong enough to be your successor. I may not be strong enough to, to be what you want me to be, but I won't let you kill me, and I sure as hell won't let you kill Sasuke. I made a promise to Sasuke that I'd stay alive, and I don't plan on going back on that. Naruto then bursts with a newfound strength and determination, finally voicing his inner thoughts. He then grabs his kunai and brandishes it in front of him, staring directly at Itachi's torso so he can't be caught in a genjutsu. He then lets out a battle cry with such ferocity and bower behind it that even Itachi, the seemingly unfallible and unshakable Itachi Uchiha, is then taken aback by this. Itachi then just holds his hand up, indicating for Naruto to wait, and Naruto, still needing time to formulate a win strategy, decides that maybe waiting will help him in his strategy so he complies. Naruto, you pass. Naruto's determined and scrunched up face then shifts to that of confusion. What do you mean passed? You're trying to kill me and you threatened to kill Sasuke. Itachi then shakes his head. No, no, Naruto. I just said I would test your response to a life or death situation. Or at least, that was the goal. And I'm glad to say that you, for the most part, acted appropriately. You didn't run, you didn't give in to fear, and you were able to... You know, suck it up and attack. Naruto then drops his kunai, shocked and somewhat angry that being in this life or death situation, being forcefully confronted with all of these emotions, it was all for a plan, it was all for a trick, it was all for a test, and Naruto just drops everything. He then falls to his knees as his body starts entering shock from all of the mental and physical damage that his body has taken very recently. Itachi then smiles as he walks over to the unconscious Naruto and hugs him. Naruto, no matter how, how you feel towards me, what your emotions are, and no matter how much contempt, hatred, or disgust towards me you have, I'll accept all of it, and continue to love me as your little brother. I'll continue to love you, the same way I love Sasuke. Itachi then has a tear drop from his face onto the soft soil, and he wipes it from his face. He then picks Naruto up off of his feet, and walks him back to the cave. And that, everybody, is where I'm going to end part four to the What If Itachi Adopted Naruto. Um, for all of you guys that think even this What If, which is probably about 15 minutes, is still short, um, I guess I apologize. Like, I don't know if I should be apologizing. I don't think I should. I mean, I think 15 minutes is a decent length. Um, but I do plan on making these parts longer. i just been kind of, like, struggling with, like, I guess, tiredness. Not burnt out, um. Not because, like, I don't like this anymore. Just just struggling with a little bit of, like, fatigue a little bit. But, you know, I'm going to be back on the grind. Back on, you know, my usual stuff. I'll try to get a 20-minute Anbu video out to you guys tomorrow. Along with me working on some new what-ifs in the background. And um, me finally coming to, like, finishing the first chapter, I guess I'll call it. Of what my original slash not original kind of spinoff of, like, Naruto would be. You, you guys will see when I drop the video. Still don't know really what to title it, but I'll, I'll figure that out, I guess. Um, 
I, as usual, I, like, I did leave links to my social media um, down below. Instagram, uh, Twitter, Discord, all that good stuff. Discord being being pretty active in there. Twitter, trying to you know post daily. And Instagram is just mainly for you guys talking to me one-on-one, -on -one, DMing me, all that kind of good stuff. So if you guys do want to interact with me on a more personal level, that is the avenue to do so. Um, uh, if you guys enjoy the video, enjoy this series, and you haven't done so, uh, consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss out on more content and so you can help me on that road to 100 Hey, I guess. Um, <laughs> anyways, as usual, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, guys, this is Anime X. Signing off.